And now I'm going to start by saying something very obvious and yet very important. We are not at war. If we were at war, no doubt we should have to disregard everything that wasn't of essential importance to the lives of our people and the prosecution of the war. We should certainly be driven to curtail home investment severely, to cut down drastically building and the supply of machinery for civilian purposes. We should very probably, Mr. Chairman, if we were at war, be thinking of having to reduce our exports pretty far, and I think we should be looking round for assistance to enable us to continue to buy essential imports. But it's worth remembering in that connection that even in 1940, indeed from the beginning of the war until the arrival of Elise Lent, even during the Battle of Britain itself, with the fighters fighting in the air and the bombs dropping, we here were engaged then upon an intensive export drive to bring in every pound's worth of dollars or any other foreign currency we could to pay for our essential imports. Well, sir, thank God we are not back in 1940. How much more then is it obvious that we cannot now because of our peacetime defense program, despite our peacetime defense program, proceed to neglect our exports and assume that somehow or other, somebody else is going to find the wherewithal for us to pay for our imports, as well as exports and home investment. And we recognize, therefore, we must all of us, I think, face this, that there must be some falling off in exports from this group as a whole as well, of course, as some serious repercussions on supplies for the home market. Now, I think we're also going to have some decline in exports of raw materials and semi-manufactured products for the simple reason that where you have a shortage, unless exports of the raw material and the semis in question are curtailed, we shall simply not be able to maintain industrial output at home. Now, that's a subject I shall say a little more about later on, because I know that many of you have been particularly concerned to revolt against it. So, within the limits set by these considerations, which I have thought it wise to set out quite frankly before you, you may be sure that we shall do all in our power to assist you in your great and important task. I've made it plain, I hope, that in your factories and businesses, and in this convention here, you're concerned with the fulfillment of an absolutely vital objective of national policy. You're faced, I've spoken of them, with many difficulties of a most intractable, frustrating and anxious kind. But I hope you'll be encouraged by the thought which I here and now confirm and emphasize to you that in the opinion of the government and the country, your ventures and your efforts represent one of our greatest hopes of riding the present rough economic waters and coming safe home to more stable and less difficult times. <clears throat>